pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 and extended again by chapter two of the acts of 2023 this meeting will be conducted by a remote means members of the public who wish public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner by emailing uh steve mccarthy at mccarthy s at amherstma.gov that's m-c-c-a-r-t-h-y-s at amherstma.gov no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the Amherst website an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. And with that done, we'll call the meeting to order at 5.03 p.m. Take a quick roll call of attendance. Helly? Here. Gaston? Here. And I am here, so we are three present with two absent. And um, now we do go on to public comment. Is there anyone here? I, oh, sorry, Gaston. Just to note, I, I think I, I, it's, it's telling me that we're still in a practice session. Oh, oh Steve. Oh, yes. You are right. I started recording, but I did not. Oh, Thank you, it. Gaston. Okay. Okay. I didn't see that. I was reading my script. All right, so do we, have, do we have to go back and redo the whole thing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, hold on. Hold on, let me get back to my... All right. Are we out of the practice session? We are, yeah. I've, I've uh, corrected the issue. And we're recording? Yes. Okay. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended again by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner by emailing Steve McCarthy at McCarthyS at AmherstMA.gov that's M-C-C-A-R-T-H-Y-S at AmherstMA.gov. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the Amherst website an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. And with that done, we'll call the meeting to order at 5.05 p.m. and take a roll call of attendance. Uh, Hallie. Here. Gaston. Here. And I'm here. Um, three here and two absent, right? We didn't pick up one. Okay, great. So public comment. Is there anyone here for public comment? And there is no one here at all. So we can just skip on to discussion topics. And... The first one is marijuana regulation. Gaston, we had a conversation with Dylan about that last time. Um, okay. And went over some things and um, he was gonna go over it again. And I okay. think it was gonna go to the town council. Is that correct, Steve? Uh, the marijuana regulations? Yes, oh, here he is, here's Dylan, okay. Oh. Hey, Dylan. How are you? Good. How are you? Yeah, doing um, all right. Oh, all right. Weather. Wrong are you major. um okay? So <laughs> we are actually we are um we have gone through public comment and calling to order and we're on discussion topic A, I think marijuana regulation. And I was just wondering if you had an update and. Yep, I do. I have. I should have sent this to Steve. My apologies for you guys for review, but um, I. Uh, yeah, I did the changes that we talked about. Uh, I can show you guys just the, um, if I can get over to my Google Docs here. Okay. Uh, share my screen so you folks can see. Uh, and then I'll give everybody kind of a chance um, to actually review it. And then we can vote on it next time. But I think okay. it's based on kind of what we talked about. Unless I, I missed something, it should all be here. Give me just okay. one sec. Uh While you're uh, picking that up, I um, I have a law professor who has become kind of an expert on cannabis law, and he presented at UMass a couple of weeks ago. He has a new book called uh, Weed Rules. Um, I bought a copy, Dylan, so I can I can lend it to you. But uh, anyway, it's it was interesting to hear his perspective on how much has changed and how much has stayed the same in the in the regulation of cannabis. Hmm. Awesome. Yeah, I'd love to check that out. Um... All right, where is uh, 
Steve, can you give me the ability to share my screen? Steve? I think you're co-hosting now. You should be able to now, Dylan. Yeah. Got it. Awesome. Um, all right. I should have. Where is it? Uh, here we are. So yeah, it's um the change I made. I took the authority there. Um, mm -hmm. that one I'd actually taken from um I was looking through best way to do it. I actually found the Doug's old regulations, so I'd taken some stuff out of there as well. Uh, so that's what I have for authority. Um, definitions are still the same. Uh, license guidance, uh, again, changed a couple of things here of just, uh, again, uh, rather than be point to Mass General Law, um, Chapter 138, just saying Massachusetts General Laws. Um, not getting too specific with that because I don't think uh, it's quite there yet um, in terms of Mass General Law with marijuana. Maybe after reading this book, we'll uh, might make some amendments. But everything else here is kind of kept the same as what we talked about. I kept manager of record, basically, same as we talked about before. Um, employees, we uh, simplified it a little bit there. Um, and then everything else is the same other than just a disciplinary procedure. I wasn't sure how to word this one in accordance with Section 2 of these regulations. Um like that's that's what we like just referring to the authority i think was i think the, the way we decided or that i wanted to go about that unless somebody um had a different approach i, I think that makes sense what do you guys think about that yeah guess guess on uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just uh, I'm reading it carefully here. Okay. Um, what uh, the the what what the question is how to whether to refer internally to the authority of the uh, yeah because I know uh, yeah I guess I guess it was uh for um for alcohol regulations it um. It, it cites like specifically, you know, chapter 138 and this and that. Yeah. And in this case, because we're, we're kind of taking more broad authority because everything's, you know, so still so right. new with marijuana. I don't think it's just yeah. a very definitive chapter in mass general law. Um, uh -huh. That I just say, well, all right, well, section two, because that just refers to kind of the, the general authorities. Section section two of, of, of the, these of, regulations. Of, okay. of these regulations. Yep. Which then refers back to just our our authority section so authority because um, typically with when we see these in um alcohol regulations it just quickly cites in accordance with chapter uh 138 of massachusetts general law right we'll say something like that where i think where we should just keep yeah. it a little bit more broad until there's you know massachusetts chapter section 257 or whatever that that refers to how uh towns deal with um marijuana so i just said just just refer back to the authority um i don't know if anybody has a, a, a better well, way i, I guess it, 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 i mean i guess if you're if the sentence is just referring back up to the language that's above in the regulation i, I guess instead of um in accordance with i'd say as set forth in uh, mm -hmm. i mean it's a minor that's a, that would be my word suggestion and then in section two it's where you're saying in accordance with the uh, the general laws or whatever, right? Got it. And set forth in section two of these regulations before imposing. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, and then, uh, and this is the the last one there because I know we were talking about this a little bit, and it it, you know, I think it applied more to like something like a restaurant than necessarily a marijuana store, but we decided. Um, do we we did do we like this one? This is the one I, I was trying to think about it again. Like it it's it seems a little weird, but do we do we like this one that 
you know, you, you, you can still operate and just not sell marijuana. I don't know what they still sell CBD oil or something. Right. Paraphernalia. But, yeah. Cool. Um, if we like it, then we can just keep it in here. I don't, I don't see a reason for it, but other than that, uh, or a, a reason necessarily to, to get rid of it. But, um, if we like it, then that's, that's pretty much everything there. I'll send it to you guys, uh, to this meeting just for review and then, Okay. make any changes because I, I just opened it and realized I, I saw one more area i missed a 138 but stuff like that and then if we like it we can uh, adopt them next week does that all sound good um yeah i think so so did we i can't remember from last meeting were we going to send this by through town council before we yeah i think it? i think i was waiting for um for some of these updates so i can send okay. it along to him tomorrow okay um and um and yeah i think we should um yeah, move carefully with this because I think this will be a very impactful regulation. So um, we can go uh, bring it through him and and uh, have anybody else come come back with any uh, any of the board members come back with any other suggestions yeah. they have and um, okay. try to take a cool. really close look at it before we uh, we move to a vote. But it looks like it's in um, good shape as it is. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. So there we are. I'll uh, I'll share it out with you guys and um, yeah, we can go from there. Okay, great. Thanks, Dylan. You got it. Um, next up is hold on. Um, what's next? Lunch carts and food trucks on Prey Street. All right, Steve, how's it going? It seems to be going well. Um, we have done it twice now. The uh, second time was this past Friday, mm -hmm. um, and we again had a Roosters Roman Cantina and La Vera Cruzana present. Um, they um. Uh, you know, seems to be running safely and with no disturbances. Um, I've heard kind of conflicting reports about um, how much business they're getting and how, how um, you know, if it's really worth their time to come out. Um, so um, it will be going again this Friday. Only roosters will be able to go there, but um, okay. I think we'll be not running it for the Thanksgiving weekend. Um, but um, for December um, 1st or 2nd that weekend, um, I think we may try to do it on Saturday because I've heard that um, that Friday, Friday for whatever reason, is really not a uh, a big bar night anymore. So okay, huh. maybe that okay. will be able to get them some more business. But I think this has been a great uh, proof of concept so far. Really, been no disturbances, no problems at all. Police are totally fine with it. Um, food trucks um, seem to be grateful to be there, although um, some wish there was a little bit more business. And uh, and um, yeah, when they say they get positive reports from customers, so. Fantastic. Sounds good. Uh, Question, um, Steve. Thank you for that, sure. Steve. Yeah. Um, yeah, one, yeah, thank you for that. Um, uh, cause yeah, I know yeah, I, I've gone over and, and chatted with those folks, I think last Friday and yeah, they'd said that, that it just hadn't been that busy, but it was particularly quiet in town for a Friday. I was, um, mm -hmm. I was surprised, but, uh, so the plan right now with this is it's going to be, um, fridays and then you're trying out saturdays after thanksgiving am i correct about that yeah i can't imagine the the thanksgiving weekend will be too busy so i figured um probably not worth the trouble for that one um but then the one after that would be um you know i, I had to kind of run it by the dpw and the police department to see if they'd be okay with saturday um mm -hmm. and by the time i did hear that we kind of were locked in for this friday although only one will be coming anyway <laughs> Um, but for the December 2nd, I believe that Saturday would be doing it on a Saturday to see how that works. Okay. And um, what, maybe um, if this is successful, we could do it both days, but you know, pilot program for now and, and seeing how it goes. So how long until, uh, this pilot program ends? I don't know if we really have a firm time timeline on that. I mean, I know that the town manager is limited with how many days he can, um, close the public way without town council action. So I think that. Um, you know, over the winter break for the colleges, um, mm -hmm. we'd probably be reassessing and looking at, uh, you know, we want this to continue and maybe with town council action. Interesting. Um, okay. Thank you, Steve. But the town manager has been supportive. He, um, you know, he, he thought it was a good idea and wanted to give it a try. So he did, uh, you know, we had some conversations with uh, town council members and the town manager did use his, um, his authority to, to temporarily close the public way. And, um, the uh, town so the, the the ability to license the food trucks lies with the license commission um and for these things it's been delegated to the town or the building commissioner as is in the regulations but um for actually the closing of the public way 
would lie with the uh, town manager or the town council. So the town manager has been using his temporary authority for this pilot program, but um, should it be successful and we want to continue it, it would be uh, the town council that would ultimately have the authority to close the public way for an ongoing program. Yeah. And then we just change the, um, send them some new language on that, right? Um, send to they, To the town council for them to vote on? Um, we, do we just... I think we'd have to. I'm not exactly sure. I think I think it's just an act they can take. They have the authority, and they would just have to. Oh, okay. Use that authority to, uh, you know, to, to. I don't know exactly. Some kind of vote, I'm sure, but they would just uh, deem the, the road closures ongoing for this program at this specific time. So. Okay. Oh, so I see. So it wouldn't be a matter of uh, granting us authority, with when that when the, the, when the select board the kind of the power mm -hmm. of the got split between the town council and the board of license commissioners so it wouldn't be rectifying anything like that it would just be something they do as a separate act yeah right? the, the license okay. commission has already been delegated the um authority okay. over food trucks so right okay the license commission could just say we're going forward but um wouldn't be the best idea with the road wide open so okay um, work with all the stakeholders and um try to make it a successful program i may reach out it's only been those two who have been interested so far Really? I thought there would be more interest, but there really hasn't been from food trucks. So I may try to reach out to um, some neighboring towns for their list of licensees and spread the word so that maybe um, more will come. Because I think we were hoping for at least three a night, um, but it's really just been the same two so far on the two nights. Okay. All right. That would be great. Any other questions about this? If not, uh, thanks again, Steve. That's great. And thanks for doing that. Um, okay, process for chair and vice chair elections. And we talked about this a little bit last time. And I think the consensus was that we were going to wait till, was it June, July? Or? The reappointments are in January. Is that is that right? I think so. And I, I think, um, I think my, my term will be up in January, I believe. Oh, it is? Right? Okay. Um, I think maybe both of ours, Marion. I think we were together. Oh, we're, uh, we're January twenty twenty four. They they were. I think when we were here. Why can't? Um, I, um, I, uh, I. They were three year appointments, so I guess I guess they're up, and um, I I guess I will forecast that I I. Um, I understand I may be getting appointed to the affordable housing trust. And I think I can only kind of carry one thing right now. And so I, I may, uh, I think I, I will not ask for a renewal of my appointment. Oh, okay. Oh, well, very if that, I assuming that yeah. that goes through. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, well, thanks for letting us know. We're of course, very sorry. Maybe sorry to lose you, but, um, I totally understand. Now I'm back home. Oh, here we are. <laughs> We've done a lot for this yeah. committee. Okay. We've done a lot yeah. for this, thank you, or this board. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, we'll have to get uh, have a get together um, uh, yeah. or, uh, and maybe beginning of next year. Okay. All right. I think, I think we said July because I think Steve mentioned, don't we operate now? Or I think we're shifting to. Uh, fiscal, like our, I think the terms end in June. Is that why we talked about a July? I think so. So we might have you a little bit longer, or you might. Okay. Have All to right. Well, we'll, we'll see. I'll I'll keep you guys posted. Okay. All right. Thanks, Gaston. Yep. All right. I think you're right about it all being in June. I think it was supposed to be staggered. Um, the terms were kind of staggered, but I do think they were all in the summer so um okay all right we will well, see we'll, i guess we'll we'll i guess it's probably on the website um i think we have I the think years, when we first not the... started okay it was because the town council was new and we needed to be appointed so maybe we started earlier okay okay Normal i started time. in june yeah okay okay i see all so right well we'll be we... sad to see you go if you do <laughs> guest on yeah definitely well, I, uh, um yeah me me too um i um uh but i guess i'll keep you guys posted well let's let's uh, figure this out i i guess um the my appointment was in january of 21 yeah yeah the initial, 
the initial members were all in January oh, the initial, because it was kind okay. of created. But um, I see. I, Town council went into effect. I, I, January. I, don't, I guess I don't know if I have an email of the reappointment, although I must. Although um, that couldn't so, have been the first one because you were an initial member guest on, and um, we were certainly around before COVID. Right. Yeah, we started. Right. So, in and if it's three year appointments, I, I mean, I see this memo from Paul, January 26, 21. Um, so I don't know, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. It may have been delayed due to, um, COVID and everything. Yeah. We'll have to figure okay. it out. Okay. Very okay. good. But um, anyway, for elections, I could be remembering wrong, but my understanding was, um, that we wanted to just hold off until, um, all five members were here. Um, yes. And I so... think we were going to wait till July. That's okay. I'm... So yeah. we will, I will note that down and we will drop this until July then. Okay, and then when Doug is, when we have all five, we can probably nail it down. All right, so I'll leave it on the agenda for next time then. Okay, but great. We'll just be well, I think because Gaston wasn't here, so I think the consensus yeah. was last time that neither Dylan nor her, I nor Doug wanted to take over as as chair <laughs> and so unless you had a burning desire no, to yeah, no, no 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 so i, I status quo like, we may no. have had it's like um like seven up this might be the unelection marion congratulations oh man <laughs> <laughs> i think that's why we said yes no, that's why we said we would wait yeah July yeah because it Fair didn't enough. seem like there was a burning desire yeah to exactly fix. all right okay. so, um, but if anyone resigns, clearly that, you know, we could do a kind of a working document of when elections are and if someone resigns, if that's a trigger for a new yeah, election. Okay. Yeah, that would be nice. So. Be good. Okay. All right. So that will go on for next agenda. Um, any other questions about discussion topic C? Nope. All right, licensing wait. fee. Oh, sorry, Dylan. Go ahead. Wait, I'm 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 sorry. We're still keeping the election on the agenda for next meeting. I think we're going to talk about it further, and we're oh. waiting for. We're hoping. That oh, in, in terms five... of picking when we actually do it, got it. Okay. Right. Yeah, and Go we're on. waiting for Doug for all five to be here, so that do we? Be... I'm 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 just going to put this out right here, right now. I'm going to say in case I can't make it next week, I'm okay. just saying so you guys can continue the discussion without me. Okay. I think elections. June, uh, or yeah, June first, first meeting after June appointments happen is when I think there should be an election every okay. year. I'm going to put out there as well that I think even if somebody drops off, we have to reappoint unless the chair or the vice chair is the person who drops off. I think the term would continue till June. Um, and it would be one year term every year, uh, to, to revote. So that way, if I'm not here, you guys don't have to kick it down. We know your view. Week. Makes sense. That is that okay. is my view. All right. Um, All right. Sounds reasonable. So what you're saying is you don't want us to have an election while you're not here. And like, <laughs> <laughs> you, hey, you guys got four votes. You want to go for it? You go for it. <laughs> well, you might end up chair. Or yeah. Vice chair. <laughs> <laughs> I, I decline. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, Lordy. Okay. All right. On to the next one. D licensing fee review. So, Steve, this is we still have a window of opportunity. I believe so. Yep, we're still um, still conversations with that going on. Um, what really uh, jumps out to me is the disparity between the wine and malt on premises and the all alcohol on premises. Right. Uh, with one being a thousand and the latter being uh, thirty five hundred. Um, but um, yeah, if there's anything else that jumps out to anybody, um, or. Uh, and Steve, would you be inclined to level up or level down? Um, I mean, I don't think, um, you know, there certainly isn't any pressure to raise fees or anything. It's not a, a you know, the town needs more revenue type of uh, open window. It's just kind of, uh, I think it's budget season. I think that's what's prompted it. So, um, okay. so it's just kind of, you know, if anything seems out of whack, it's a good time to kind of get it into whack. Um, one thing I proposed or at least floated the idea of um, was eliminating the common Vixlor's license um, oh. because uh, it seems like it's really uh, serves uh, no regulatory purpose at all. Um, 
maybe in you know 1870 when it was written it did but uh i think we've evolved uh, past that with food licensing and everything and if you i was looking through the statute again there's some really crazy things in there um where if the uh the license commission or the um board of selectmen approves a uh a common vixwas license for a uh, licensee that is not in compliance with the um, regulations then the board or um, or selectmen are personally liable for 50 dollar fees for doing so hmm. and um, for anything in this in that chapter that the licensee is not in compliance with in chapter 140 also includes like gun licensing wow. and all kinds of crazy things so um and there's, i think yeah i think they're, they're in holders are mandatorily required to provide a bed for any traveler who may come upon them if they are licensed. So I don't know if uh, no vacancy laws may be illegal, no vacancy signs may be illegal. I don't know. Um, okay. But uh, it definitely seems like an archaic uh, law that um, there's not really any regulatory oversight for. And in the interest of trying to streamline things for new businesses and um, just yeah. make things easier, um, it would make sense. And I don't know if um, we can even. Uh, choose to not uh not issue common victuals licenses anymore or if um you have to be a town council action or um what would need if it's possible for the town to do it or what would happen so i'm going to reach out to brian riley and i'll send that along with um uh the and draft of those marijuana like regulations and i'll just if you can just send those to me Dylan, just as a reminder yep. um, i mean i would so say the only thing the common vic does is it provides a voice for the community to wait in not that we really hear about it but way in on a new business that the town is going to you know because i don't think people the health department posts so there's a way for like neighbors to offer feedback that's just me being plain devil's advocate no yeah that's um that's a good point it is uh the only public forum for um a restaurant that doesn't have liquor i suppose And I was just wondering, this may not be relevant at all, but since we have a snack regulation in our alcohol regulations, would that, like, can we require that without a common dick or is it, I mean, one is not dependent on the other, correct? It actually, that's a good point. We should probably um, review our existing regulations to make sure nothing is contingent on that. But right. uh, I mean, anything could be adjusted. Okay. Um, I mean, pretty much everybody who has a common Vic would either have a hotel license or a um, food license or a liquor license. Right. Okay. Any other questions or reactions, Dylan? When was the last time we dealt with just a common Vic and we like met the people proposing? Um, I think the most recent one was just a couple of weeks ago. There was the new, um, taco place i forget what it's called uh over um right by hazel's where hazel's was that's the other places in worcester and yeah oh okay. yeah uh -huh. and that was just common vic yeah they come up pretty frequently i mean any any restaurant that doesn't have uh liquor would be in that category yeah. of of uh, that's the only exposure to the license commission okay Except when they don't have live entertainment or something but usually they wouldn't if they and have liquor. uh steve there's there isn't another statutory category that would apply to a restaurant that we would be able to use instead to avoid the archaic stuff um my uh completely uneducated guess just by reading the statute is that the common vic was maybe intended as kind of like a proto health license and maybe like a proto anti-discrimination just in the way it allows for the license to be revoked and it says you know you have okay. to provide for anybody who may come along so right um, i'm guessing you know if typhoid mary was uh hooking up flapjacks at your restaurant in 1890 the selectman could um could pull the license if uh everybody was getting sick but um i mean i think all those um all those are kind of taken up by the modern health license and um you know we have certainly have modern civil rights yeah. law and things like that um mm -hmm. I mean, I, I guess, guess. My, yeah, I mean, I think if, you know, we went through the whole process of trying to articulate what was important for the alcohol licenses, which, you know, we still have, um, it's still hard to identify what would be the valid criteria to reject one of them, but it's clearer. I don't, could we articulate what are the criteria for 
being a common VIC applicant. I mean, if we can't say what, what the criteria are, I think that weighs strongly in favor of, of getting rid of it. Um, I, th I think the only one really comes to mind right away is, you know, somebody of a uh, good character, you know, it's a vague one, but it's, uh, it's, it's that type of right. thing when, when, when you see that one where it's like, got it, that's, that's what it means when someone isn't of good character. All right. I'm going to <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, but we, 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 we have trouble. It's hard to, um, you know, in, in retrospect, we, we, we would have been really hard pressed to know that, uh, the Porta owner was a of that character yeah um so i i kind of see the the character requirement as a as uh kind of the opposite of what um steve was saying which is the like we we keep out quote unquote undesirables which is whichever group is not welcome in a given town yeah i i i just see even the purpose of a lot of the regulation we do both common vic and even the the alcohol or marijuana i feel like a part of it is even just uh, to to say hello to the the people in town here. Of, of yeah, a, it 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 has that value. Just like all right, well, you know, on on behalf of the neighbors of Amherst, right. where you'd be like, all right, so yeah, who are you that's moving on in here? All right, okay, it's just kind of a yeah. kind of a hello, because I mean, I I almost feel like there there isn't a criteria of, of denial for a lot of these things. Um, where I feel like the criteria is, can you in a in a very brief five minute hello with like some yeah. local people, can you alienate us all so much that we would vote yeah. no? It's yeah. like that, that that's that's almost the criteria. So it's it's more of a hello, I think, than anything else. Uh, as long as the <laughs> fee for something like a um, common vic is you know reasonably low, I I don't have you know, for paying for Steve's time. You know, since, okay. Also, since you who brought it, you did bring up port up. I just I remember after that happened, going online and Googling him and finally finding that he had cases pending against him in yeah. different states. So yeah. and I don't know if that would have been enough, like if we'd seen, oh, this is coming up on yeah. this next Thursday and we look this guy up and say, right, we can right. ask him, what are these, you know, what are these legal cases? Um, would that have been, been enough to, to turn it down? Well, I I, I, oh, yeah. I I guess my my reaction is that that is a very interesting thought experiment, but the yeah. conclusion of that would be that we have to add stuff to our process, right? Be because we're not doing right back background checks. Uh, we're not we're not evaluating cases anyone may have against them or their police record or anything. Are we allowed um, to do that or not? If you just take what they get on, like we just whatever they have on the application, that's what we get. I mean, is that? I don't think it would be illegal that? to do more more diligence, like to do a. Um, you can Google. You can... Yeah, we could. I mean, I think we could do like the deep search on someone and try to find if we if we thought it was important and had the time and resources to do it. Right. Um, but would that would that improve the quality of our of of what we do? I mean, I actually think about. Not just as Dylan said, but welcome to the community. But I look at yeah. renewals as an opportunity for people to, I mean, we've never had anybody, so there's that. But like, what happens if a restaurant opens up right next to you and they're loud and don't do great crowd management? I guess, where where does the community go if there's, you know, because that's not a health issue. Not a building issue. I'm looking through the various statutes. It's all in Chapter 140, but um, I guess on that direct point, sec Chapter 140, Section 9 says, if in the opinion of the licensing authorities, a licensee is an inholder or a common victor ceases to be engaged in the business he is licensed to pursue or for it fails to maintain upon his premises the implements and facilities required on by this chapter, they shall immediately, they shall immediately revoke his license. If a licensee at any time conducts his license business in an improper manner, the licensing authorities, after notice of the licensee and reasonable opportunity for hearing, may upon satisfactory proof thereof suspend or revoke his license or impose a fine provided by, and then a bunch of uh, things about the amounts of fees. Um, 
but uh yeah it kind of goes all over kind of the um i think the oops i just closed it i think the uh the chapter that a section that most um yeah. describes it is um Section six, this is a common victuals or inholder's license may be issued to an applicant. Therefore, if at the time of his application, he has upon his premises the ne necessary implements and facilities for cooking, preparing and serving food for tra strangers and travelers. In the case of an applicant for an inholder's license also has the rooms, beds and bedding required by law. An applic applicant for a license as a common victuals or inholder proposed to be exercised upon the premises which have not been Equipped with the fixtures or supplied the necessary implements and facilities for cooking, preparing, and serving food, upon which, in the case of an applicant for an inholder's license, they're not also provided suitable rooms, beds, and bedding for the lodging of his guests, shall file with the licensing authority a plan showing the location of counters, tables, ranges, toilets, and in general. So I guess they did draft there after they had toilets. In general, the proposed setup of the premises, which shall include um, I think I skipped around there um, and, and where he proposed to, ha to have upon said premises and when the license may issue together with an itemized estimate of the cost of said proposed setup and of so, such fixtures now the implements and facilities necessary for cooking, preparing and serving food and of such bed and bedding. And thereupon the licensing authorities may grant a convict or an inholder's license as the case may be uh, upon the condition will be done basically. Um, yeah, so that's kind of um, the most clear section, I think, of what it's supposed to be and what the purpose of any of this is. Um, I don't know. But, well, uh, I, I think it's a, a long for you guys. Um, I think it's a good um, it would be a good thing for to have a task force on. Sure. Um, uh, I mean, I guess it's something I'd be willing to work on like towards the end of December when, when I finish the teaching for the term. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think your point about uh, being able to greet the community is well taken Dylan, but is that worth um, charging $50 for? We exactly. Welcome to, to Amherst. We want to say hi, pay 50 bucks for the privilege. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a common complaint about doing business in Amherst is all the, uh, the red tape and bureaucracy. And I think um, inspection services were, you know, we've done a decent job in trying to reduce that and streamline things. And, um, we had a case just the other day with that uh, taqueria where the common Vic was the um, last thing um, they needed and they had, or this is actually a different restaurant I'm thinking of, but it was the last thing they needed. And um, uh, they had every, everything else. They had gone through some tribulations with um, the food license and the plumbing and electrical, and they just didn't, weren't aware that they needed a common Vic hmm. and they were about ready to open, had employees on the, on the site. And then um, it fell upon me. I have like a last review step with the food licenses where I basically check for common Vicks and other things. And I said, oh, they don't have a common Vic. And so they, um, you know, I generally at this point, if, if a situation like that comes, I won't say, well, tough luck. You can't open until you go before the board. I'll generally just have them apply and, uh, um, you know, we'll schedule for the next meeting and call it a day and let them open mm -hmm. in the meantime. Um, but, uh, you know, what what value we are getting out of that, I uh, I don't I don't see any. I mean, yeah, I'm fine. I, I, I usually go down and check out new places. So, you know, I, yeah, I, I, you guess, could... I, I guess I can do that for the meet and greet. Go, I can go say <laughs> hello to people in town. Yeah, and we can certainly uh, encourage people to um, to attend if they want. But, yeah, charging $50 every year um, and having, you know, additional paperwork they have to do for another license when they already have to do their food license and um, certificate of inspection and liquor license, if that applies, it just seems like a uh, something we could do to make it a little bit easier for people. So I don't even know if it can be eliminated or if it's just a, a um, mandatory, um, the town has to do this, but um, okay. I so... think it'd be good for, uh, I'll send along some of these, um, the sections of this statute. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a penalty too. I thought that was the, the, the thing I thought was the most crazy. I'll see if I can find uh <laughs> A li an alderman, member of a licensing board, or selectman who signs a license granted, granted contrary to this chapter shall be punished by a fine of more than fifty dollars. Hmm. I guess it's referring to the license, but Chapter One Forty like includes like, like, like firearm magazine limits and all kinds of like animal like rat rabies vaccines and all kinds of crazy things, and uh, it goes up to Section um, Two Hundred and Six, and this is Section One. So I'm assuming this is a rather uh, old old provision 
It's a lizard brain. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Steve, you're gonna check with Brian Riley about what if such a thing can be done. Yeah. Is that and, right? Uh, okay. And we can put it on the agenda for um for next time to discuss. I mean, I don't know exactly what the timetable and all these things are. I mean, people are certainly renewing their common vix now, but um, right. it's um something to um something to consider. And I think um wherever we go with the liquor licenses, we'd probably be you know, raising the wine and malt a little bit just to put it in line with somewhat with the uh, all alcohol, whether that one comes down or not, I don't know, but um, we could probably make up the. the and uh, when is the when's the deadline for? Is there a deadline, or they're just going through the? I don't know if there is really a deadline. Yeah. Or, or oh, you don't. Okay. Been, we'll have to right. figure that out. But okay. Um, I guess the the other. I mean, I guess I would like to suggest that if we are going to boost the the wine and malt, we um, consider phasing it in. For current licensees yeah uh, no, yeah i don't think we'd be hitting them with it okay this fall um i don't I know mean, I mean, that's just yeah it could go but we could we, we could go we could go in like you know for current ones we could get there in like five years or something and um and it only applies directly to new applicants or something yeah it's um we can we can be creative. I, I'm not saying that has to go up again. It's not like the town's looking to squeeze more revenue or anything, but um, we can. Uh, you know, all things to look at. That that just struck me as the biggest disparity. Okay. So we'll keep that on for next time, and uh, licensing thing review and um, common vic potential removal. Um, any other questions on this? Nope. Okay. Annual report. I will send. I will send out a link to um at least that. I'll send a link to chapter one forty. Yeah. And, um, at Thank least you. The first. Uh, okay. The first um, at least as a section for fraudulently procuring food. I don't. Uh, at least the first twelve or so, fifteen, twenty maybe are uh, are um, related to it. So I'd be happy for you to dig in and tell me what you all think because it is a. Uh, Section 6A was repealed in 1941, it appears. Hmm. <laughs> so I'm <laughs> curious what you all make of it. Okay, sounds good. All right, thanks, Steve. Um, okay, so annual report, everyone got a draft. It is basically last year's report with some extra things. So Steve, I think, um, I know, I couldn't remember, we didn't do extension of premises this year, did we? I don't believe we did, but we I can check back through our uh, yeah. agendas and double check. So I know that has to come out and uh, the lunch cart pilot program should probably be discussed a little more fully. Um, and it's only been Fridays, so I can take Saturdays out. Uh, was there anything else? Do you, everyone want, I guess it, it's due on the 29th of November. So if you wanna review it a little bit more, if you have anything to add um, and you can send it to Steve and you can send it to me. Sounds good. Okay. Any other questions? No. Nope. Okay. Upcoming meetings and agendas. So um, next meeting is the 30th at 5. And after that, uh, did we want to talk about December now or December then? We can just talk about it then. Does that sound good? Yeah. If we wanted to, because otherwise we'd go from the 30th <coughs> to the 6th and then to the 20th. Oh, but we thought we might skip and just do the 13th, the, sorry, the 14th and the 28th, right? Because it's better to have a meeting at the end of just closer to the end of the year. Is that right, Steve? Yeah, it's good to have one um, right at the end because uh, people will often um, have, uh, yeah, you know, they'll get everything in last minute. And we want to be able to approve them for, um, to open, to be, okay. continue to be open on January 1st, so. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I mean, we don't, we don't, it doesn't have to be a full meeting. We could just have just the straggler renewals, but something towards the end of that last week, I think would be good to have. Okay, great. So right now we have the 30th, the 14th and the 28th for our next three meetings. And we have some topics for the agendas as we've been going on. Is there anything else? Um, anything new? What about that place that was going in where Hazel's used to be? Are they almost done with their license? Yep, they just have one thing outstanding. So um, I believe they'll be on for the end of the year. Okay. And um, and uh, we do have uh, one uh, applicant coming in, um, working through a draft with him for um, a location um, where Vici Salon used to be. 
kind of uh, oh, yeah. near um there's an eye sh eyeglass shop there and uh there's um Lily's restaurant that strip there so he wants to do kind of a uh high end um food and wine retailer Mm -hmm. oh nice the uh owner is a former chef so okay uh, um, like what do you mean do, do we have licenses available for that uh he'd be going for a beer and wine yeah so we would have a, a beer and wine off from beer wine and wine pa premises. package store yeah so he'd be having um okay. he wants to have you know high-end fruits and vegetables and cheeses and ingredients and things like that and some wine as well okay. kind of a okay. uh, 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 great I, I didn't realize we had more of those available yeah no we're at cap for all alcohol but wine and malt we do have available how many um i have the uh list on my desk we have five available nice wow. oh good gotta start pushing pushing wine and malt yeah so is that what reminded you to think about raising that that uh that fee? So that's not the one I think um it's the, it's is, the okay, it's the service one that you're concerned with. Yeah, so so just to go through the kind of the four major categories for all alcohol on premises it's 3500 for wine and malt on premises it's 1000. Um, yep. for all alcohol off premises it's 2000 for wine and malt off premises it's 1500. Okay. Uh, I can okay. send you guys the entire yeah seventy five percent yeah feed okay. chart, but uh, it's um you know we don't have to do anything. It, it's just kind of there's an opportunity. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, makes that sense. Just, that's always jumped out to me as a big disparity, whether one goes up or one goes down, or they both move or yeah. whatever happens. It just seems uh, um, I don't know if there's we get twenty five hundred dollars worth of extra trouble for um hard alcohol being available. So. Yep. So, hey, Gaston, didn't you do a comparison chart? I think. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta, time. I gotta look back at that. Yep. Okay. All right. So that would be great. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, hey, Steve. When the Garcias does their renewal, can you ask about their manager? Yeah, that'll um. Their change of certainly manager. come up. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Um. Anything else for the agendas? Next time. No. Okay. Four topics not reasonably anticipated forty eight hours prior to the meeting. Any topics, Hallie? One one thing I noticed, and I don't think we can do anything about it, but I went to the UPS store, which is right next to the new all alcohol on premise store. We mm -hmm. and I don't know if anyone else has been there, but you know we were we were sold on the no nips and classy, no signs, and um, I pulled. And, and there were nips on the parking spot and lots of signs. And like I said, I, I did not, nothing we can do about it, but I just thought that was an interesting, you know, go but ahead. Are, are they selling nips in the yes. store? They, they are. have them? You're kidding. Oh, wow. Yeah, he did, he did ask me about that a, a couple of months ago, and I told him there's no condition. Damn. That's... Okay. Uh... Because well, I would have voted switch. for the Big Y location otherwise, thinking yeah. the convenience. Yeah, switch. But anyway, well, I just well. that was an interesting observation. So that's all. Um, Disappointing. I, um, well, I'll share, uh, unrelated to this, we'll share some good news with you folks. Um, I, uh, I just got a new job. I'm going to be working as an associate planner for the town of East Hampton. Congratulations. Uh, Congratulations. Thank great. you. Uh, I just found out the news today. So it looks like um, I'm going to have, you know, a much more uh, regular schedule now rather than having no idea where I am on a given right. day. So I should be able to uh, start regularly making our, our Thursday meetings. Um, yeah, that's that that's should awesome, be man. that. I think uh, they're I'll be serving. I'll be like the Steve to their planning board and their zoning board of appeals. Um, and I think their planning board is Tuesdays and their ZBA is Wednesdays. So should be good. Fantastic. Oh, congratulations. That's great. great congratulations, Dylan. Good news. Excellent. Thank you. Fantastic. All right. Anything? Um, tried to, it's hard to follow that up, but um, <laughs> anything, <laughs> anything else? Nope. Okay. Well, if there's nothing else, uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thanks, Dylan. Is there a second? I'll second. Thanks, Hallie. Um, and let's take a vote. Hallie. Aye. Dylan. Aye. Gaston. Aye. 
And I vote aye, and that is four to zero, one absent. We're adjourned at 5.52 p.m. Okay, well, thanks, everybody. Have a great Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Okay. See you on the 30th. Bye-bye. All right, bye. bye thank you. Bye. Thank bye, you. Steve, thanks.